that bag, uh, getting that cake, yeah They missing the way, yeah She used to play, yeah Now she on my face, yeah Hello and welcome to episode 12 of Rody Rumble. I'm Adam Bernstein and today we're joined by Andre Berry. He's originally from West Hempstead, New York. He attended Malvern High School and St. Andrews High School in Barrington, Rhode Island. He originally committed to New Mexico Military Institute and then transferred to the University of Rhode Island. Uh, Andre was part of the 2017 Rams team that won the Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament and the 18 team that won the Atlantic 10 Conference under coach Dan Hurley. Uh, Andre's now playing overseas. He's played in Spain and most recently Finland. How are you today, Andre? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, but before we start, I should mention I am a Long Island guy myself. Um, Where? Yeah, I'm, I'm from Merrick. Oh, so. that's that far. Yeah, so I'm, I'm familiar with Nassau County. But, um, you know, I'll never forget uh, a couple of years back when you guys were playing at the Barclays Center. Um, I think it was either Seton Hall or Virginia, one of the two. I was actually there, and uh, I know the Seton Hall game. Jared Terrell hit that uh, game winner. Game yeah. winner. That, was, that was nice. But um, I just I also remember that the announcers were saying that you were making your you know your homecoming. Your family was in the arena, um, but you know that's that's really cool. So I guess uh, what was that like? You know, playing at the Barclays Center in front of your family. That game was around Thanksgiving time. I want to say so like. A lot of my fam out of out of state all like have like a dinner at my grandma's house in Valley Stream. Mm. So we're all usually there for Thanksgiving. And then and me playing in Barclays that weekend, they all would eat the dinner and they just all hop on the um Long Island Railroad right to the Barclays. It was just a good feeling to have the family there to see us play two great teams, um, prime time at the Barclays. I I grew up like two miles from the Barclays, so it was a good it was a good home homecoming for me, actually. So I enjoyed it. That's awesome. And uh, another question I had before we jump into some of the other questions regarding your career was um, tonight being senior night, you know, with Fats Russell and Jeremy Shepard. What was your senior night like uh, back in 2018? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's my senior night. Um, it was very emotional. We had five scenes leaving me, Jared, EC, Stan, and Jarvis. And, um, Oh, it was it was just very emotional. Like it was the fans were crying, the staff was crying, and then it just we were on the court and laid an egg out there. We we got blown out by like thirty to um Saint to Saint Joseph's and it was one of those things where like the tension was just so emotional in the air that you just couldn't help it, you know what I mean? It was yeah. It was just one of those games where you where you just gotta take Take a defeat and just move on with with, with that, honestly. Yeah, and but that was a tough to yeah. play against because we got destroyed. Yeah, and you guys, you guys were such a great team, and you know, I can imagine how emotional it would have been. You know, probably being one of the best teams you. in this program in like the last, I, I can't even remember. Um, my dad went to URI, so I've been watching. I I mean, I'm only a sophomore, but I've been watching URI basketball for a long time. I I remember going to Fordham. Uh, seeing you play, you know, there was that one game you had like 20 points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would always watch you guys play. That team was unbelievable. Um, so I can imagine how emotional that would have been. That was a fun team to be around. We all we all got along on off the court, as you can see. Um, mm -hmm. We were on a big win streak, and that and that, and that just plays plays into our connection off the court. That we was around each other all the time. We live in the dorms together, where we practice every day. We just had like a bond that like. It will never be broken. And like we still talk to this day. So it's not like we just played that season and then went on. Like those are my brothers for life. So Yeah. Another question I had, um, kind of jumping around, but another question I had uh later was if you were still in touch with some of them and you know who you still talk to, who you were closest with on the team. So Um, I talked to I talked to everybody, that's the thing. Um me and Haas played Call of Duty and two K a lot. And Jeff as well. Me, Hoff, and Jeff played Call of Duty and 2K a lot. Um, me and Jared talk all the time just about music and just stuff like that. Me and Stan. Stan was probably the closest person I was I was with on the team because we came in the same year. And, mm -hmm. like, he transferred. I ended up transferring as well. So, like, 
the two transfers were running to all the time, different. Like we had the same class together. We turned to the same grade. So me and Stan came in and clicked from day one because we were always running to the, with the, because we were both transferred. We lived, we lived in the same dorm, everything. So yeah, we actually had Stan back on, on this podcast a couple of weeks back. So you did? Yeah. He, he was back uh, like two or three episodes ago. So yeah. Stan's a character, but he's a good dude though. Yeah. He's, He's been very successful too outside of basketball. Exactly. So that's good. But um, to start with one of the questions that we normally have for all the guests that come on is, you know, what motivates you? What is your why? Um, my motivation was kind of, I would say different than everybody else's. Mine was more like just proving everybody wrong. You know what I mean? So like coming up in high school, like I wasn't the highest recruited guy. I had to go Juco in, in Mexico for one year to get my name on the scene a little more. So my big thing was just trying to prove everybody who who looked over me throughout high school that I could play on a Division One level. Because I was getting no Division One calls, nothing. And then I had to go to Mexico and then prove myself. And then that motivated me to go to URI and prove myself again. So, so my why is just to, like, prove everybody wrong, just, like, for all like, the non-believers and the doubters pretty much. Yeah. And that's amazing because I feel like we hear about, especially with programs like New Mexico and, and URI, you know, they're big programs, they're D1, but it's not as, you hear more of like the underdog story, you know, coming up from just either not being highly recruited and then working your way up to a certain program. It's not like the Big Ten or some other conferences where it's like, they're so highly recruited and then they continue to go on that track. So I think that's amazing that, you know, you kind of just work your way up um, and you got here to so. URI. I know. That's what, that's what it's all about for me, trying to just just prove everybody wrong and just prove to myself that I could play on the highest level. And I, and I think we did that at URI. Even yeah. though it was in the end, we probably had one of the hardest schedules in the country every year. So, so like, it's not like we was – it was a cupcake. We had to go on the road and play against great teams. And we yeah. came up with victorious and we lost some games, but we – we were con- we were considered a top twenty five team in the country. So my for uh, two two of my three years at URI. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, more so on just how you got into basketball. Were you you know being that you're six eight, were you always kind of just drawn to basketball, or did you play other sports uh, growing up? I played, um, I started off young playing soccer. I feel like every kid in Long Island plays soccer for a while. You know what I mean? Every kid. Yeah, plays. I feel that. Yeah, so I played soccer until I want to say like sixth grade and then I was doing CYO basketball and then I was doing soccer and like it was just too much for my parents so one day they made me choose between basketball and soccer I'm like I was just getting into basketball but it was just so much fun and it was inside like it wasn't cold man. it was inside it was so much fun yeah and I started playing but I, I was playing then just because I was the biggest guy I wasn't playing to really do anything with it I was just playing I was the biggest guy and I was and I was good at it and then I thought I'd take it more serious and serious as time went on. And I played JV my freshman year of high school. And then I played varsity at Malvern my sophomore year and my junior year. Then I transferred to a prep school in Rhode Island and I reclassed and did two years there. But I just like basketball was fun to me because I could like score on you and like, and like scoring on somebody and like they can't stop you is like a different feeling than anything else. It's like, like it's gonna be a long day for you, you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel it. Um, just out of curiosity, like, uh, you, you played at Malvern, but what kind of uh, what other schools should I say? Like, did you play um on Long Island? I'm just just curious. Um, I played up. So we played East Rockaway, um, Carl Place, Friends Academy. Oh, yeah, Cold Spring Harbor. What's a few things? Elmonts. We played um. Sawanicas. Okay. I went to uh I went to Kennedy in Belmore. Um so you probably didn't I'm but, not uh, Kennedy. I'm not right, yeah. yeah. Probably didn't play them that much, but we, we do play Sawanica. We do play uh like Wimbrook. I think that's like around where you are. Yeah. My mom's actually from Wimbrook, but really? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm I'm familiar with the area, but I've um, been I've been living in West Hempstead for like 15 years and I've never seen Liberty High School in my life. I really? never I, I never seen the school in my life. 
like in person or just in, in, in a game? I've I, I never seen it. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> no, where it's at, that's the crazy thing. And it's like probably like 10 minutes away from here. It's probably, I think it's like right off of Sunrise, Sunrise Highway. I, I wouldn't know. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyways, but um, you initially committed to New Mexico Military uh, Institute. What was that experience like for you? Well, that was different to me because it was a junior college, so that's like a two-year school. So you don't go there for two years. But all my grades were were good, so like I didn't have to go there. But I wanted to go there because I wanted to play Division One basketball, you know. And I and I knew I could play Division One basketball if I was put on the right stage. And then the coach called me one day. I was on a train coming back to New York, and I was like, "That my high school coach was saying that like." All these Division Three teams was after me. I'm like, I don't want to go to Division Three. You know what I mean? I gotta pay money out of my pocket to go to school. And then a random number called me from New Mexico, and then the coach says he's been watching me play since I was like 13, 14, and like he thought I was gonna be like one of the best guys because when he saw me then, I was one of the best guys then. And then he said, listen, like if you come here for one year, you do your thing, you'll play in front of coaches every single game. If you do well this one season, trust me, you're going to have so many schools calling after you. And then that's exactly what happened. It was like, the first day I got on, I mean, it's a military school, so like it's, it's very strict, you know what I mean? So like you got to like shave your head and everything, no facial hair, no nothing. Wear uniform, all that stuff. So besides that part, as soon as the games happened, the first game, he was right. All these coaches was there. I got my first offer from Texas UTSA. And then... From there, just just went on from like the high majors, Virginia Tech, Texas A and M's, to the URIs, St. Bonnie's, Portland, Washington States, and then it was just one of the things where it just fell off on the place. Gotcha. So were you getting? I, I take it there were a lot of coaches and scouts like coming to the games and stuff. Yeah, people just coming to coming to Roswell, New Mexico, just to see me play. It was crazy. It was the craziest thing ever because it's not a big airport, so like that, mm. so like you would have to. Go to Albuquerque, then drive three and a half hours. Oh wow! Or um, go to that, or go anywhere to Dallas, then take the plane to Roswell. We're still like twenty minutes away, but gotcha. I was on there for the for the opportunity, and then the schools were just coming in the gym, talking to me, watching me work out, and it was just surreal. It was, it was a surreal moment. Yeah, and I uh, I assume you went on a lot of like college tours and stuff. Like yeah. yeah, I visited um. I, I visit URI, of course. That was my last visit. And every school before them told me don't visit URI because they already knew I was from Rhode Island. And they, they, they knew I went to high school there. I got family there. It's close to home. They already knew if I went there, it was going to be game over. But I went to Virginia Tech. Um, I visited North Texas. I visited UTSA. I visited URI. URI was my last visit. I took another visit. Where's my... Uh, New Mexico State, and then you were on my last visit, and it was just one of those things where I got there. I think Jared and them was all freshmen. Haas was a junior. No, Haas is going to be a junior, and that's when you were. I was like the up and coming. E E E C was going to be a junior too. It was one of those things where Hurley had a plan. He wanted to be, build a dynasty, build a, a great program, and I, that's what he did. Yeah, I guess I guess that leads me into my next question, which is, you know, you chose to play at URI. Like, what was it? I mean, you talk about you had your family there, you know, you had played high school there, but what specifically was it? The campus, just the environment that the, you um, had? I think it was how, like, cool the guy was with one another, you know what I mean? Because mm. I visited URI, I want to say, like, a month after the season ended. Okay. And they were right back in the gym, you know what I mean? Going right at it, trying to achieve the goal next year I'm like wow like these guys took no break they're right back to it it's the hardest practice I've ever seen they're going at it at it at it and it was one of the things where like I jumped into the workout because I was just so so you know what I mean I jumped into the workout and then Coach Hurley like everybody says that, like he's like this tough guy I mean of course he's tough but like he's like uh, such a he's he's he wants the best out of you, and like, and like, he's gonna push you to the limit. You know what I mean? He always says that like, your body will never let you down. It's always your mind that's gonna let you down first. You know what I mean? And yeah. like, he would, 
he would push you to the limit because like he know that like your body could take it you know what i mean and then i just i just loved it it was, it was like this is home so home my parents mm-hmm. could go on 95 three hours they're right there right yeah so my, my next question was what was it like playing uh under coach early you know what were practices like <laughs> in game you'd see him on the on the like side of the court just stopping his feet and getting really into it what was it like you know playing for him um the practices changed though well, i mean my my first year it was my see my sophomore year so practices were like in, like intense three hours like three hours intense practice then lift after so you could just imagine how tired you were every single day and then ec got hurt that year and then Haas got hurt towards the end of the year. So we had like eight players and we used to have two walk-ons in practice with us going hard still. Like we were still going at it like like nothing. And then as time went on, he laid back a little bit because, you know, like like the body, like the wear and tear on your body, you don't want to burn everybody out so early. But he was still super intense, super defense oriented. Um, details is a big thing. Just, just focusing, listening. Just playing hard every and like the practices is way hard in the game honestly like the game we played like all our games were so easy compared to what we had to deal with throughout throughout the week so we was prepared every game and like seeing a coach yell and scream on the sideline at the refs that amps us up because we know that he got our back no matter what you know what I mean yeah like sure. every time he got a tech we knew that he didn't want to get a tech but he got the tech to fire us up pretty much so like if we saw him get a tech, we knew that was time for us to turn up because I right, coaches get out here losing his losing his damn mind right now. So so let's just play hard for him so so he don't have a heart attack out here. I feel like that's another reason why you guys were such a great team. You know, he really just had a lot of passion for the game and like I feel like the coaches that are more successful are the ones that, you know, take the tech that argue with the refs just to kinda give you that momentum and yeah, like yeah. it was never him being rude. It was the, always, always him yelling at the refs to fire us up pretty much. You know what I mean? It was yeah. never, it was, it wasn't ever anything mean or anything, but he, he was a good dude. We, we had a great group of guys. Um, in my senior year, Fast was the only freshman, so we had the same exact team. Like we lost Karan and Karan and Haas, but Fast was the only one that came in and like, we just had the same exact team. We already knew everything about each other. And then, and then we went to the Bahamas that summer to play like three games. And then we just shouted it from there and we just knew it was going to be a big year for us. Yeah. So were you initially cre- uh, recruited by uh, Hurley or, or Coach Cox? Because I know Coach Cox does a lot of the recruiting. Um, Coach Carr recruited me. I don't know if you remember him, but Coach Coach Carr recruited me and Coach Murray recruited me. Okay. And Coach Murray left the year I got there and then Coach Carr was still there. But the day I committed, I spoke to Coach Cox though, and like, he was like, "Jay, so so what's the word?" I'm like, "Yeah, Coach, I'm coming there." He's like, "My man, my man, you know him, cool dude." He's like, "Yeah." So, I would say that like, he was, he was the first one to like know I was going to URI pretty much, because I had told him for the morning of my commitment date. Mm-hmm. So yeah, how do you, how do you think he's done uh, so far? as taking over for her as a coach? I think he's done a good job. Um, but this year is tough, though, you know what I mean, with the whole yeah. COVID thing. like All the transfers, too. I mean, all the transfers and, like, yeah. thinking that some not going to be able to play, and all of a sudden everybody gets cleared. It's like you got to adjust on the fly midseason. Like, but I think last year, it was on the cusp of making the tournament, you know what I mean? First, mm-hmm. you know, all, all first year is always, always going to be tough. But he's he done a good job, you know what I mean? I wouldn't judge him off this this one year though because with everything going on, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, so you know, you played for you arrived for three seasons, um, making the March Madness and those Atlantic ten, uh, ten tournament runs, and just all of the the memories that you arrived. What what was that like? You know, just being um, being a part of an NCAA tournament just has to be it was, crazy, you know. So so the first one, what was that? 2016, 2017? Uh, 2017 I believe yeah, so 2017 when um we had to win the A-10 to make a tournament mm-hmm. so that was crazy we had to play three games in three days 
And so we, um, that was the craziest thing because it was high senior year. He never been to a tournament before. So he, he was like, I'm going to a tournament this year. I'm going to a tournament. And then VCU was the number one seed. So they was in the tournament already. And I think Dayton was in the tournament as well. And then we was like, if you win this game, we're going to be in the tournament. And then it was, it was one of the things where, like, I want to say it was a Sunday. It was selection Sunday. The game was probably like, I want to say it was like a noon game. Selection shows at like three. So, like, we won the game. This cr- fans are going crazy. We're celebrating, celebrating. Mind you, Hurley's just trying to get to the airport so we could watch the selection show yeah. <laughs> and see where we're going. So then we, like, we rush to the hotel, rush to the airport, grab our stuff, and then we sit in the airport with the, the this 80-pound trophy. And, like, everybody was like, what is this? We're like, nah, we just won a championship. We just won a championship. <laughs> so we're in, we're in the airport running around with this big trophy trying to find – uh, um, tables that, that like 20 of us could sit at and we just propped it on the table at like, some random bar and we saw that we was going to um, Cali and playing Creighton. Yeah. And then that was just a Cali itself was just a great experience. Like it was just like the um, the whole the whole vibe about it, you know. Police police escorts everywhere you go. Um, a big charter playing with everybody rodeo on there. Yeah. You all the media stuff, talking to the media, um, just seeing like all the NBA guys who like announced the games. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's... Well, like yeah, it's just it's a crazy thing because like we're all like in the same area, and then having like an open practice so like all the fans could watch you practice, and just like it was just a crazy thing. And then I just remember, I remember from that after winning the tournament, I was watching the game. Um, I remember seeing. Afterward, you guys were like watching on Selection Sunday as a team, just like so amped up when they yeah, when they yeah. said URI like it was in yeah. the tournament. I just remember that, and I also remember, um, I think it was like coming back to Rhode Island, like in the airport, and all the yeah, fans yeah, were just yeah. lined up. I still had that video on my phone. Yeah, that, that, all the fans were just lined up cheering. You guys were like hoisting up was, the trophies. Yeah, that was something crazy because yeah. we didn't like expect the airport to be packed. You know what I mean? Yeah. When we got there, we was like, whoa. It was like all the fans in there. I'm like, wow, this is how it feels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how it feels. And uh, it was just like a great experience. But we knew that we wanted to go to Cali and get, a, get at least the first one. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And we, and we got Creighton. And then we had Oregon, too, in the second round. But we let that slip, slip right through our hands. Yep. Let that slip. And then... My senior year, when we won the eight, we won the eight ten with like four games left. Like, like we ran through the league. We, we was like fourteen and zero, I think. Ran through the league, won the eight ten the regular season at 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 home, and then that was crazy too because we won it by like thirty against Dayton. We like packed them, we like threw them out. We won against thirty, and then the cafe just fell, and like we were like, "What's going on?" You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. They bought the trophy. And I remember a coach saying that, oh, the A-10 trophy is in Warwick Airport right now. It just got shipped. I'm like, what are you talking about? It just got shipped. And he was like, oh, snap. He was about to win the conference today. <laughs> and then confetti fell. And then we was like top 25 all year. I think the highest we got was like 13, 14. That was when uh, – that was the same year that Stan Robinson at the the corner three or – Yeah. It's Duquesne. Yeah. Yeah. That game was epic too. We asked him about that a couple of weeks back. He was – it was just like talking to us about that. Yeah. Like, like that was like that was like a normal shot to him. Like it wasn't like no pressure on him because Stan mm. was probably one of the guys who who was in the gym the most all the time. That's what he said. That was yeah. the answer he said. Yeah. Stan was always in the gym. So like him making the shot, I wasn't surprised about it because it's like he's always in the gym, like he's supposed to make the shot. The funniest thing about it is that I don't think Stan Stan remembers this, but Jarrell Coleman, who was like a um Dope at the time, whatever. He um he told Stan that like Stan that like he's gonna be open, and then I'll, I'll never forget because I'm I'm standing there. I remember, and then Stan gets the ball, and Rel says knockdown, game over, and then he he hits the shot. I'm like, wow, Rel really like he really called the whole called thing. It, yeah. No, I I watched that play like over and over again, and I just remember like doubting the top of the key. 
creating space in the corner and then just hits a shot. It seems so like routine. It just seemed like, you know, you, you practice that kind of play over and over again. Exactly. But like, we was down a lot that game too. And then we had to, yeah. we had to, we had to march it back. And like, yeah, and then I actually came across the video of um of a March Madness game today against Oklahoma. Mm. Um, EC hit the three. And then fast stole it on the fast break. Fast stole it hit it again. Yeah. yeah. That that's, all, that's been all over Twitter because tonight's yeah. the last game at uh, the Ryan Center. So. Yeah. I watched that today like 20 times. I got goosebumps every time watching it. <laughs> there's there's certain plays I feel like. Like that one, um, the one I just mentioned, Stan Robinson. Yeah, um, and then there's, there's one more thing. I want to say when, um, when Jared hit the three, like half court in that game too, remember? I don't think you remember. But Jared hit like a deep three against Oklahoma too. Like, oh, I think I think I remember. That was earlier on in the game. But yeah, yeah, early in the game. But that was yeah. a yeah. That team that team is just unreal. I mean That was a great, great experience. Mm-hmm. And it was just so fun, you know what I mean? Like we just have fun out there. That's that's what it's all about though. I feel like the reason for your guys' success was just because like you guys were just having fun. Like I, I see sometimes when maybe with this team and with other teams, like you know, they're having fun, but there's just not like, maybe, maybe not this team. This team is like, there's a lot of new players to the program. So it's like, you know, but, but those teams that you were part of, like, I could just tell you guys were having fun and like, you just kept winning and winning. And no one really cared who was scoring because if we, if we win, they were top 15 in the country and we're all and like, we're all getting seen. So it's like, it's not like no one really cares if someone's averaging 20, like no one averaged 20, but I think Jared averaged 17, he's 13. I was ten, Stan I was ten, Jeff I was nine. Like it was like fast I was like eight, surreal, like like we just we just all just we was like whatever. Some yeah. game surreal played more than me and I and I didn't really care because we was just still winning. And I'm like this just game to Sean. I'm I'm gonna just come in when I need to. But games where I were like where I played more than him, it was the same thing, the same respect. Like we really didn't care because we was all just gonna win and trying to reach our goal playing professional and everybody on that team is right now yeah, absolutely so i guess that leads into another question i have was uh your favorite memory if you had to choose one from playing at uri you know oh, man. we talked about a couple just now but if you had one like favorite memory that just stuck uh, stuck out to you that you you know still think about a favorite memory only one name as many as you we, we got time just tell yeah. any stories you got anything like that um, er, no one knows that like my, I remember my sophomore year, we went to um, Dayton and it was like my first time like actually playing like my sophomore year because I, I was on the bench a lot of the time my um, first year year uh, but we had a game at Dayton. I think Dayton was like 20 something in the country and like we were like 10 point underdogs, EC didn't play, Haas didn't play. We had seven players at the whole game. And then, and that's when they had Scoochie, all them, like, Dayton was stacked that year, Charles mm-hmm. Cook them. And then we go to Dayton at, like, 2 o'clock games, EBS. And, like, I haven't played, like, like a meaningful college minute, like, ever. <laughs> like, ever. And then I win that game. I had 17 points, 7 for 7 from the, from the field. Perfect game. And then that was, like, my, like, confident game. And then... That was a great moment because I felt comfortable out there. And it was on the road too, you know what I mean? And it was like yeah. one of the best teams. I wanna say beating Prov too, because beating Prov at the Ryan Center, mm. that game you just really can't describe it because I feel like sorry to cut you off. I feel like that was like the birth of uh Fats Russell in a sense. Like yeah, people yeah, really started yeah, to kind of yeah. learn about yeah. what he had. That was a coming out party for sure. I yeah. think he had 20 points that night. I don't, I don't even remember how many points. He's he just got 20. And then, yeah. Then he beat them without EC and, and Soro. And it was like one of those things where, like, we were down to our best players and we still came out the win. Like, it was just a crazy, like, that's how most we trusted one of the, that, like, we could go in that game confidently with our two best players, with our one or two best players, and still come out with a convincing one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Those teams were so deep that it's like, like you yeah, said, yeah. it doesn't really matter who scores. It's we, we, we really didn't care who scores. Like, fast the better had twenty, and no, yeah. one, no one really cared. We was like, 
Yeah, and he was a freshman too. It's like freshman. Biggest game ever, probably the loudest game he's ever been in to this to this day, honestly. And it was one of those things where like that was a great memory too. And then just being in the tournament again. That was just like a being in the tournament, but like not having to win the A ten, you know what I mean? Just like having an at large bid in the tournament, not having to worry about winning your conference, just knowing that you're gonna be in the tournament. Yeah, you know what absolutely. I mean? yeah. I mean, it's just, it's unreal, like, how much you can get into one ex- one college experience. Like, you were only there for three years, but it, it was unreal. Had the lowest of the lows, and we had the highest of the highs. It was just one of those things where, like, yeah. we started off low, and then we just doing it brick by brick. And it, was, it just came to the point where we was just, it was just natural to us, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Every game, we knew the game plan. We knew how we were going to win. We knew that. If you win this first, like the first twelve minutes of the game, the game's over. Like, like that was our mindset. Was like, listen, let's try and get the walk-ons in the game today, because because you know what I mean. Yeah, I was trying to play so hard that the walk-ons come in the game and and like do a little bit. That was our whole thing. Like, that, that's how it was. Yeah, that's a great mindset to have. Um, you didn't care, but you know now you're still playing basketball. You're playing overseas. Uh, yeah. You're still playing overseas, or I'm not there right now. Yeah, COVID and everything. I'm gonna go okay. back the next season though for sure. Okay, so what is that experience like um, playing in different countries and stuff like that? Um, well, my first year I was in Spain, and that was a great experience because the owner of my team was Marcus Sor actually. Oh, so, okay. So like, he was a cool dude to like talk to and just be around and like, I watch his game a lot because he's not the most he's not the most athletic, but like, he's He's very skilled, and like I kind of feel like I, I kind of mimic him to this game a little bit. But that was a good experience, you know. It was just like the hardest thing about playing overseas is is the language barrier and just trying to like adapt to like their culture and like what they want out of you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then, so, like, it's, like you're like a rookie all over again. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Playing against you, home, who have families, and like, you're just this. I was this 22 year old kid, 21, I mean, 23 year old kid coming in, tra- play, playing against men on my team, 35. They've been like a 10 year vet already, 15 year vets. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, did you have to learn uh, other languages to kind of communicate with people or coaches? I mean, I know the basic stuff. Like, I could, I could go to Spain right now and like survive because, like, I understand the, um, like the basic language, you know what I mean? Mm. Finland, I cannot go to Finland and survive though. I can tell you, I, I'm, I'm not surviving there. <laughs> no way. So what was that like uh, last season playing there? Oh, it was, um, you know the truth? Yeah. Hor- horrible. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was just a bad experience, I think. The team wasn't good. Um, but I, I love the opportunity, of course, but like the team wasn't that good. And you know, Finland, like, it's like in the winter, it's 20 hours of darkness. So it gets dark at like three o'clock in the afternoon. And like, imagine it being dark all day and then it's just, it's just like depressing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I left there mid season, I went to Ireland. And then okay. Ireland is not bad because everybody speaks English there. Yeah. All they really care about is basketball. Um, I think it's like football game they have and, and like whiskey and Guinness. They don't care about anything else. <laughs> sure, I'm sure the bars were great down there too. Yeah, the bars were good. Yeah. I'm kind of mad because I was supposed to stay for um, St. Patrick's Day, but COVID messed it up. Right. Imagine St. Patrick's Day in Ireland. Oh, man. Yeah. Coming up, maybe you can. Uh... Nah, I can't even get a gut. <laughs> country right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I have two more questions left, but what are your uh, your future plans with playing or just in general? Um, if I put on playing for like as long as I can, like I feel like I'm I'm very healthy right now. I don't have no major nicks and knacks. I'm just I'm just ready to get back out there and start playing, like like pursuing my career. I'm only wow, like like a lot of years left in me. Mm-hmm. I'm like super healthy right now. I feel. Like my game is 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 good right now, and I'm always ready, pretty much. Then probably after basketball, I'm really not. I really haven't thought about that yet because I feel like 
the more I play, the more I would see like where I could see myself at after basketball. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I would definitely want to keep on like stay around the game somehow. Like a lot of people say like I I like talk talk to kids a lot and like well, so like coaching wouldn't be a bad idea for me because I could relate to the kid on top and the kid on the bottom who's trying to work his way up. So something around there. Mm. And that actually leads me uh, to my last question. Um, so what advice would you give to, you know, athletes or kids or anyone who's just aspiring to play uh, at the collegiate level or professional level? I would just say um, trust your work, bet on yourself all the time, like double down on yourself. If you know that like you're capable of doing something and someone else doesn't see it, prove them wrong and just like thrive off that prove people wrong and just like being the best of you because i i took all this as like a sign like a, a disrespect you know so mm-hmm. i'm so every day my mindset was like how am i gonna wake up and just prove that person wrong or like or how am i gonna be like better for myself and just prove people wrong build on yourself and just trust your work at all times trust what you do day in day out if you if you go in shoot 103 pointer shots in the corner and you get that shot in the game, shoot it. You know what I mean? Trust it. That's about it. Well, thank you, Andre. I really uh again appreciate you coming on and uh spending time to talk to me and those listening. I was so yeah, securing that bag, getting naked, yeah. They missing the way, yeah. She used to play, yeah. Now she on my face, yeah. You in you out. This is a gang. This is a gang. This is a gang. This is a gang. This is a gang.